Hey there everybody, PT Pop here, all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And today I'm going to analyze an interview that Alec Baldwin did on ABC with George Stephanopoulos on I think I think the show is called Unscripted. Just like this is unscripted. This is what unscripted is really like. And I'm going to discuss with you how they manipulate you, the general public, with lighting, with music, with mood, and with the people they choose to interview Alec Baldwin and how they present him. I'm going to go over how, how the media does this to gain sympathy, to gain an advantage over you, the general public, because you don't know about the lighting techniques and how they're manipulating your emotions with different type of sensory input. So I'm going to start off with here. Now first, let me talk about, this is, this is the opening sequence to his interview. And if my computer would work, So they're using the clapboard, and I bring this up because they're trying to create a mood that it's unscripted. So, the, so you think you as the viewer are thinking right away, it just must be all impromptu. It must be impromptu, and it's just kind of like two guys hanging out, chatting, having a good time, talking about the shooting of this poor young lady, in short, the shooting of Helena Hutchins. And so they show the clapboard because they want you to give this, give you this feeling of, hey, it's all unscripted. It's all just kind of like, you know, we're just hanging out, having a chat here, just two good friends. And Marker, good. you immediately, the first shot you get of Alec is a shot of him looking haggard, tired. And they've got him lit. Like, like I've got bags, and I've got, a, I've got a light over here to my left. I don't exactly have Rembrandt lighting here, but I'm just doing this because I just threw up a light. I'm not trying to make, I don't really want you to think I look haggard, even though I'm, I'm getting older and I got bags under my eyes. But with Alec, they've got him lit. If you look up here, they've got him lit from about a 45 degree angle. The light's coming in from about here. And you can see it because there's a big white hot spot on his forehead. So they've got him lit from above and to the left, to his left, our right, to emphasize the bags under his eyes. Okay? This makes him look tired. This makes him look weathered and beaten. This makes him appear to be um, sincerely distraught. And I'm going to change some of my lighting here. See, and if, and if I change my lighting... And see how the mood changes? I change that lighting. Look at that. Now, I can't see myself. This is pretty much what is called Rembrandt lighting. I can't really see myself, but it's pretty close that I can tell out of the corner of my eye here. But if I put the light back on, and turn this back down a little bit, I gotta turn it back down anyway. Yeah, you know, and if I open up the blinds over here, It's now sunny, it's sunny, it's fun. Everything's nice and friendly, it's fun. But what they've done with Alec, let me close this blind back down. Despite this supposed to be unscripted, which leads you, the viewer, the uneducated viewer of video production and news production, is that the mood setting, the colors they're using, and the entire set are, are designed to create a certain mood. All right, so what this lighting is used here is called Rembrandt lighting. Rembrandt lighting is a lighting that was originally used by painter, Dutch painter Rembrandt. And the key in the Rembrandt lighting is creating a triangle of light 
on the opposite side of the face. The, the sh- side of the face is in the shadow. It's a, a diamond shape of light underneath the eye. This is kind, it's kind of there. It's supposed, not supposed to be any longer than the nose. Now, I, from what I've read about Rembrandt, he didn't use this to create drama, even though it does. I mean, if you want to look at some of uh, Rembrandt's paintings, this is what I'm talking about. This is Rembrandt, one of his self-portraits. And this, look at this, this has got a, a triangle of light here. And look at the mood in this, this dark, somber. I'm not certain what Rembrandt was going after, but I'm imagining he was trying to create a certain mood, a certain affect that would get people to go, wow, what is this? What what kind of painting is this? But regardless of what he was going for, look look at this painting. It creates a certain mood, a very serious tone, a very somber tone. Um, I don't know how, how you would see it as, a, as an uneducated, and I, I don't mean that to be derogatory to put you down, but most people don't know anything about lighting or painting. Most artists don't. But this is a very somber tone. And he did a lot of self-portraits. This is more of his work. This is this is more of a split lighting where only half the face is lit, the other half is in shadows. This is more of the Rembrandt lighting. In the Rembrandt lighting you want you want the the eye in the shadow to be emphasized. And I think painters did this in the old days to create a sense of depth in their painting. Because it, it really does, I mean it make, it, it it creates a three dimensional look on a two dimensional plane. This one right here, this is just a, this one, very dark and somber. So this is called Rembrandt lighting. That's what they're using on part of this promo for Alec Baldwin. Now, in contrast, let's look at George Stephanopoulos. They got him, looks like he's lit pretty much almost straight on. They must have a light off here to his right. That's kind of shooting in this way. It's like he's looking right into the light almost. He's, it's almost, it's, it's a very soft light. It's a very um, evenly lit light. And his face is fully exposed. There's not a lot of drama on it because the emphasis, is, the emphasis in this interview isn't on George Stephanopoulos. It's on Alec Baldwin. So the lighting they're using is designed to manipulate you and to create a certain atmosphere so you'll go, oh, look at Alec, he is so sad, he killed someone, and he says he didn't even pull the trigger. Oh, this poor man, he's so, he's so distraught, oh, look, he's so distraught, no, oh, Alec. <laughs> look, at, look at me. I look distraught, but I haven't killed anybody. Look at him, oh, poor Alec. Now, Alec says, in this interview, he says, Alec Baldwin says he doesn't care if his career is over, after the shooting incident. Oh, Alec, that is so kind of you. That is so kind. Oh, what a man. He's willing to sacrifice his whole fancy acting career and his millions of dollars and his big mansion and his sexy wife just because he killed a woman. He says he didn't do it. Oh, I, I didn't pull the trigger. No, I didn't pull the trigger. I'm innocent. I'm an innocent man. He says he doesn't care. If career is over, actor says in TV interview he did not pull trigger of gun that went off and killed cinematographer on the film set. Now they always referred to this young lady as just the cinematographer. Her name, Alec, was Helena or H- Helena Hutchins. She is a human being that you killed. It wasn't an actor, it wasn't a dummy, it wasn't a mannequin, it was a live human being that you shot and killed. But <clears throat> he doesn't care about his career. I think that is touching. Really gets me right here. I'm verklempt. And uh, so, so in this interview, they interview, they're, they're manipulate. I'm just going to scroll through it real quick. They, they manipulate you with light. Now look at the setting. Now I don't know where this was taken. I don't know if this is in his house. It looks like most of his. If this is his house, most of his stuff was bought at uh, Ke- uh, IKEA. <laughs> look at that. The, 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 cheap the cheap uh 
shelf over here is bending from the weight of the big fancy uh, pottery barn uh, sculpture over there. So they've this is all intentional. It's all grays in the background. Gray pot, dark blue somber gray um, bowl, uh, dark books. This creates uh, what's called chiaroscuro, which is uh, using light and dark. They've got a light emphasizing a child in a photograph up here. It's probably Alec kicking some young kid's head off when he was a child or something. You know, it's probably him playing soccer or basketball or something, if it's really his house. I don't know. And I think I might be wrong about the lighting setup for Stephanopoulos because he's, he's being lit from up here as well because you can see there's no light coming from this way. So Alec, the light for Alec is here. Um, the light for George is here, but it's it's more around the front of his face. But they're creating blues and grays. There's a blue painting here, black and white photograph here. Lots of darks, grays. It creates a somber, rainy day, sad atmosphere. They're trying to get you to feel feel for poor Al. And they keep cutting. Now this is just the pro. Oh, here's the lighting setup. There it is. All right, so I was uh, not not too too completely wrong. I'm not certain where this this light looks like it's pointing over here. Um, so see, you can see the reflection here of this. This is a uh, this is a light that they're using over here. I think it's I think it's shining on this wall, and you can see the reflection of the light in the window shining on this wall. So. They've got multiple lights. They've got this light. Looks like it's shining something over here. And then they probably have um, a reflector over here to, to bounce some light back on Stephanopoulos. This is the light that's hitting. I believe this is the one that's hitting um, Stephanopoulos. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, this, this light here is a spotlight up here. This one is, is highlighting the black and white photo of the child with the soccer ball or whatever that is. This is all done intentionally. This is designed not only to create mood, but to create depth in the scene. But they want to emphasize the darkness of the moment, the seriousness of it. They want to emphasize, they want to make, they want you to go, oh. You know? And so as you go through this whole setup here, the framing of the camera is vital in this. It's medium to tight shot on his face because this is a man who claims he doesn't care if his career is over yet for some reason he decided to go on national and world television to profess his innocence because he didn't pull the trigger and this is a man who is desperate he is desperate to convince the world the world, not not just George George Stephanopoulos. He's he's trying to convince you and me that he didn't pull the trigger because he doesn't want his career to be over. He wants people to know that he's a good Joe. He's just a good guy, and he just boom. <laughs> hey, sorry, I don't. <laughs> hey there, girl. I uh, didn't mean to shoot you. Uh, woo, my career is over. I better get on to ABC with George Stephanopoulos and convince everybody otherwise. This is a man who allegedly doesn't care that his career is over but here he is but they're they're the camera framing on this is vital close um uh, close-up shots not tight this is almost tight i see there's a lot of them rust now george stephanopoulos now the one thing i want you to notice about him they got him with the glasses Looking concerned, looking thoughtful. He's got the glasses, you know. Tell me, Alec. Well, really, you uh, you didn't pull the trigger? Okay, well, I, I believe you. Uh, buddy, I believe you. Um, but they've got George Stephanopoulos. I can't find any pictures with him. But in some of the scenes, he's got um, glasses on. He's got, oh, there, there, there we go. He's got the thick frame glasses on. Now, what they're doing here with George, they've got him in a black suit, like he's at a funeral, right? Dark suit. They've got the Republican red tie, white shirt, traditional, very 
very conservative looking um, atmosphere. They've got the very conservative black glasses, like he's a professor, or he's an authority. This this establishes him as the authority figure in the room. He's to be trusted. He's to be respected. He's to be listened to. His hair is very nicely done. His skin is clear. Um, his teeth are white. He's lit in a very even, bright light to make him look like, hey, I'm just here to intervene. Trust me. You've got to trust what I'm saying here. Look at me. I'm trustworthy. This guy, I believe, was the press secretary for Bill Clinton. Oh, uh, I think he did that, and he also was in the, in the Clinton um, campaign for running for election. So this guy, not only does he work for the American Bullshit Corporation, um, he also has worked for presidents. And they're all about their image. They're all about bullshit. They're all about how to manipulate your image so you look good. I didn't, I had a joint, but I didn't inhale. That's what Bill Clinton said. And this guy, Alec Baldwin, is saying he didn't pull the trigger. More uptight, tight shots. I don't know who that guy is. I think he's the other guy that got shot. Um, now, I don't know if Alec has moved or they've readjusted the lighting, but they've got more of a, a full a full lighting on him now. I think it's because he's moved. No, no, actually not. Look, the setting is much brighter. It's a wider shot. Look at that. They've changed the lighting. They changed the lighting on this. Now this table that was once in shadow. See how that table was in shadow? Different angle to the camera. All that's in shadow over here. Brightly lit. Oh, they've changed the lighting. They got the orange chair in the background. There's, is this a revelation moment? Was to give more of the, my salary back to know. the production Let me see. to pay for X. I and I was hear. about to say to him, let me know what it would be to be and be you guys in a house that's closer to the, how we can address your problem. I will be, be happy to contribute to, to that. The next day they were gone. See, I was about to do, which I've done on any number of films and TV projects, was to give more of the, my salary back to the production. Give more of my salary. Now, this is how he's got a little smile on his face. It's a different angle, different lighting. He's got the orange, the orange chair is emphasized here. The blue in the bowl is more the camera's kind of moving. I, they must have uh, rails here and they're moving, or they did it in post, but they're moving in rails from left to right. He said, I'm going to give some of my salary to pay for X. And I was about to say to him, let me know what it would be to be and be you guys in a house that's closer to the, how we can address your problem. I will be happy to contribute to, to that. So, so, and then they cut, they've got a multiple camera set up here. They've got at least one or two cameras on him. This, this is not impromptu. They'd have to have at least three cameras in the room, which they could. But this is all, another thing most people don't know is this is all edited Sometimes it can be on the fly with an editing board where they can switch between cameras or they they record it on multiple cameras at once and go back into the control room and in post they got some college graduate or somebody from their post production staff that edits all together with along with the producer to make it look snappy and clean and the sound is perfect and all that stuff. And I apologize, this is the actual full interview. Th this this is where you really get manipulated. Now this this is the promo for the ABC News exclusive where Alec Baldwin says he didn't pull the trigger in his first interview about rust on the set, uh, on the onset shooting. Now, this is the opening shot here. Look at this as it, as it opens. She was someone who was. Dramatic, dramatic lighting. Dramatic. Uh, Extreme Rembrandt lighting with the triangle here. Perfect Rembrandt lighting. Creates a very dark and somber mood. This is a tight close-up of his face to show the bag, to show the grief, to show how much he really feels bad about shooting this one. But he didn't pull the trigger, and he doesn't care if it ruins his career. We, we must remember that. But listen to the music. Just the music. Was loved by everyone who worked with and liked by everyone who worked with and admired. Always cry. Oh, Alec, the actor is giving the best performance of his life because his life is on the line, people. 
his career is on the line. And he's like, oh, oh my God, I killed a woman. And I'm like, my career's over. Oh my God, my career's over. And I might get sued. I've got to tell the world I'm not, I'm an innocent man. Oh, <laughs> but listen to the music. It's just, this music is designed to pull at your heartstrings. It'll go, oh, sad. This is a minor key. These are sad notes. Any oh, and the symbol, the symbol to cut the crossfade, the fade, dip to black, symbol, go back to Alex. So this is a totally different lighting, totally different post-production setup to pull at your heartstrings to get you wonder, to want to watch the interview. So this is what they put out there to promote it, to pull at your heartstrings. Oh, my favorite Alex Baldwin, who's been on Saturday Night Live and knows Paul McCartney. Oh, he's such a good man because they know that most of you don't know. They know that this will pull at your heartstrings, and and this will this if there's ever a, ju a jury trial, it's going to be almost impossible, almost impossible, to convict this man. Emotional Alec Baldwin. Vis oh, he wipes away a tear. The emotional Alec Baldwin. It's all edited in post. They they synchronize that that part. The emotional Alec Baldwin. As he wipes away a tear. Oh. Emotional Alec Baldwin. Oh, Alec. Visibly shaken during an interview with ABC. Are we really supposed to feel sorry for this schmuck? He killed a woman and shot a man. He killed somebody. He took them off the planet. Thou shalt not kill, right? He killed someone. Regardless if it was an accident or not, he took another person's life and I'm supposed to care. <laughs> oh, my career's over, Lord. The news is George Stephanopoulos. The series. Now, look at this. This is a very... Um, Highly crafted. This is from Entertainment Tonight. This is a very highly crafted, polished post production. They've they've gone through with and put what's called a Lutz, which is a way of um adjusting the contrast and the colors in the in the in the film to make George everything is grainy. When I mean grainy, see up here. Yes. All Their conversation grainy. will air in full on Thursday. The grain creates a certain ambiance of seriousness like those old black and white movies george george looks very serious he's looking down where's george he's looking down he's thoughtful oh well it must have been terrible to shoot a woman to kill her um so what's your next movie there alec their conversation will air in full on thursday december 2nd but on wednesday the network released a clip of what's to come. You haven't said much in public since that tragic accident. Why speak out now? I think the big question, and the one you must have asked yourself a thousand times, how could this have happened? It's the actor's... It happened because he's an idiot. This is a man who is an idiot. He doesn't know guns. He doesn't understand guns. Even though he's in a movie, a western that deals with, um, I think they have Colt 45s on the set or something like that. This is a man who is an actor. This is exactly why we shouldn't follow the lead of these idiot actors. <laughs> this is exactly why. He is the epitome of schmuckdom. And this is who is standing on the screen and on the stages and the, in the rock bands and all of them. They're all, you shouldn't listen to any of these people. They're just, they're blithering idiots. They know, they know how to go, to be or not to be, that is the question. And everyone's like, oh, genius, genius, oh my God. Would you bear my children? See if there's any more music. Yeah. Because I, I, I think back. And I think... He thinks back. He's being thoughtful. He's looking down. See, see these guys are all coached. George Stephanop Stephanopoulos is coached. Alec Baldwin is coached. They have acting coaches. They all have these coaches that tell them how to look. How to look sincere. Put your hand in your chin and look down. Well, I think... As I didn't pull the trigger and the bullet went to her, I was like, oh my, was that a popcorn popping? You know, uh, you know when you fired a gun. I mean, they, if it's a, it was a Colt 45 she got thought, shot with, that's, that thing kicks like a mule, I'm pretty sure. Think of what could I have done? Tight shot, dramatic lighting. Um. Now here's another shot, brightly lit. They've changed the lighting, they changed the camera angle. I think they've got a, a camera over here isolated on rails. I'm pretty sure it's a real shot. More of the, my salary yeah, see, the back to the moving. production. The camera's scrolling from left to right, so it's either on a gimbal or it's on rails. So 
they've got to have a lot of room. I don't know where they're supposed to be. But this camera is scrolling or rolling. To pay for X. And I was about to say to him, let me know what it would be to B&B &B you guys in a house that's closer to the... B&B &B you guys. <laughs> Gonna B&B &B you guys. I must so be we... for bed and breakfast. In my nice wool cap. Can address your problem. I will be happy to contribute to, to oh, that. The next day generous. they will go. He's, and now they're, they're building up his generosity as a man, as a human being. So generous. Oh, he's so generous. So you had no sense from anyone on the set that people had been stretched to the point where safety was compromised no no i never now look at the sincerity of his eyes he's looking straight ahead no no of course not i had no idea please don't put me in jail i don't want to be with bubba i don't i'm really not like that i don't go that way no i had no idea never heard one word about that none none this is a highly orchestrated um production even though they say it's unscripted and this is exactly how the media manipulates you as people and as viewers and as individuals and as human beings. They come up with these highly polished productions. This was looks like a 15 minute interview that they broadcast the other night on ABC, I think on December 3rd. And this is a scam. It's a sham because this man is desperate. He's desperate to save his name. He's desperate to save his career. He's desperate not to go to jail. And there's all kinds of political influences on the sheriff and the, and the law enforcement people that are investigating it because they know he's Alec Baldwin. And Alec Baldwin really is no different than you and me. He just happened to make some successful movies, has been on Saturday Night Live, and is friends with some big people like Paul McCartney and Steve Martin. But so what? If you were laying on the other side of the street bleeding, begging for help, dying, he would not cross the street to help you. He say, "I didn't do it. I uh, I don't want to get involved. Yeah, I, my career is really important to me right now." And if you and I got, if you and I had done this, if I had pointed a gun at somebody and and it went off magically, magical creatures pulled the trigger, and I killed somebody, we wouldn't have the luxury of being on ABC with George Stephanopoulos or Stephanopoulos or Hippopotamus or whatever Dr. Seuss name he's got there. We would not have the luxury of defending ourselves live on TV with some fancy interviewer. We would be in jail right now. And they'd be like, hey, man, nobody accidentally shoots anyone. They would not believe me if I said, you know what, I, I, I didn't even, you know. You ever watch that TV show, First 48? I watch that TV show all the time. And these poor black kids, they, they always focus on these black kids that are in gangs and stuff and shoot somebody. And... The black kid always says, well, I, I was just running away. I wasn't really aiming at the guy. I shot him. I didn't mean to kill him. And then they start crying. Nobody believes them. Why are we supposed to believe this guy? This is the epitome of rich, entitled, white assholes who have the, have the luxury of going on national TV to beg and plead for mercy in the eyes of the public so he doesn't lose his career. It, it's It's... All orchestrated, and you're being manipulated with colors. Look at look at what Alex Alec is wearing. He's wearing dark, like he's it's very serious. He's wearing dark coat, a dark shirt, blue, somber, bluish gray lighting. It's all somber. Where's the Y cut? Look at this lady that he killed. And and this is what they should be remembering: is this woman and her life and her and her career and the work she did and how how talented she was. But instead, instead. We're looking at this schmuck. This schmuck. This guy should do what Brian Laundry did. Walk off into a swamp with a revolver and say, I'll be the same, baby. You're all being manipulated. This is exactly what I talk about my podcast. This is exactly what I talk about on my PT Pop channel. The corporate owned world manipulates you and the rich and the white wealthy people get off because they have access to a fancy news crew and a news anchor. We should be looking at this beautiful girl, and I'll leave you with a beautiful picture. Nice picture of her. I'll leave you with that. There she's a beautiful, talented woman that he took the life of, and he has the audacity to beg for innocence and beg for his mercy in the front of all of us. Screw you, Alec Baldwin.